making us the number one boxing show on YouTube. And also, you guys can check us out now at savannahnow.com for the newspaper from Savannah. Um, check us out there. We're going to move right along because we got a lot to talk about. First, results. We got Henry Brucellas versus Ben Tacky. Brucellas comes out with the decision. Ben Tacky at this point is a stepping stone guy. He is the gatekeeper of that division. He's a very strong and formidable opponent, but he always comes up short. Definitely. Brucellas is just now positioning himself to get back on the mix for a title fight. Um, going to the next fight, fight that we was at, Jan Bertalomi versus Pedro Rincón Miranda. But that me with the six round decision. There's no doubt about this kid's a hot Cuban prospect. There's a reason why he was a gold medalist and he's going to continue doing what he does. Exactly. Now, the hottest fight of the whole night when we was in Tampa Chad Dawson versus Glenn Johnson. Chad Dawson, my man, I don't care. There was no controversy in my eyes. You won the rounds seven to five. You took it early in the rounds. Glenn Johnson, you just couldn't fight in the early rounds, and you let the man dictate the pace with his jab. He boxed you from the outside. He boxed circles around you. Chad Dawson, all you need to do is stay on the outside. You can box circles around anybody in the division, but when you got in, you traded punches, you got caught. You got sloppy, you got caught. Golden Johnson, uh, Glenn Johnson, nothing to take away from you. You're an excellent fighter. You're a true warrior, true warrior to the heart, and you're still the man at, at 175. I agree. I mean, Chad Dawson, you, you do the combinations. You led with your jabs. The only thing is you need to protect yourself from that over right hand that was coming from Glenn Johnson all oh, night long. long. That was like his bread and butter punch. It was just coming through. But um, hey, again, there was no, there was no steal, no robbery, no nothing. The winner of that fight was Glenn John was Chad Dawson. Maybe not by what the scorecard said, but it was still the winner. Now the most boring fight of the night: Clinton Woods versus Antonio Tarver. Antonio Tarver with a 12-round decision. Tony Otaver, you know, can you make this fight any more boring? I mean, I was actually... Yeah, poor Clinton! Clinton the, poor Clinton Woods! Poor Clinton! He tried his heart out to make it a fight. I mean, he went in there to fight. It was just Antonio Tar was in cruise control. He did cruise control. I mean, he did what he had to do. He won the rounds. He, you know, he stole the rounds a lot of times. He tried to do it at the end of the rounds. But, I mean, let's be honest, man. You were, you were not what you did in 12th. What you did in the 12th round... If we'd have done throughout the fight, I would have been impressed, my man. You know what? what you and he was over there actually making excuses for you because we were yeah. getting down on you in the stands. They were getting down on the stands. I was like, you know, it's ring rust. You know, it's a little bit. It's been a long time. He's trying to get the rounds in. Man, you know what? I tried to defend him. He tried, man. but by the end of the fight, he was with us. You need to step it up, man. <laughs> step it up, man. You know you had the time you would, Exactly. If you would have did it, what you did in the 12th round and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, by the 6th round, he, Clint Woods would have been done. knocked out. We talked too much about this fight. Let's move it along. Cameron Central versus Antonio Margarito. Antonio Margarito with a six-round KO. Man, you know, I was very impressed with Margarito's beard, of all things. You know, we said from the beginning that if Seam Throne stays on the outside, he would have decimated Antonio. And you know what? He did a very good job from the outside until Manny Stewart said, bring it into the inside. I don't know what the hell Manny Stewart was talking about, but you told that man to stay on the inside game, knowing that Antonio's game is the inside game. I mean, that, that was the fight right there. Yeah. When, when... See, Thron was on the outside. He was landing that one-two. He was landing the jabs. He was landing all the punches he needed. It might have not affected Antonio Margarito the way he wanted to and the way he's accustomed to because every time he hit people with clean shots like that, they would go down. But he was doing it effectively, and he was winning the fight. All he had to do was keep it up. That way, the whole fight, and he could have came out on top. But not to take anything away from Antonio Margarito. He, got, he did yeah. his fight, went on the inside. Clearly, the body shot dominated, and it was a wrap. It was That's good night, did, good night for C. Thron, and... Oh, you know, this leads Margarita. into this future fight in, uh, what, July, June? With July the winner, with the winner, Miguel Cotto versus Alfonso Gomez. Miguel Cotto wins this one by fifth round TKO. Walk in the park, there is a disparity between skill level there. When you want to look at a champion, you look at Miguel Cotto. When you want to look at a contender, there's Alfonso Gomez. And that is the big difference in this fight. Definitely, um, Miguel Cole, and, and just like what Le Jim Lovely said or Larry Merchant, no one should be, have to take 60 punches from Miguel Cotto in one round. In one round. Uh, definitely. Uh, you guys saw it. Uh, shout out to Carter out in Macon. I met you up at the university up there. We talked. I told you that Cotto was going to win. You were telling me that you thought maybe Gomez was going to pull it out. My brother, this is why we was going for Cotto. Moving around to the next one, upcoming fights. We got Peter Killen versus Antoine Echols. Peter Killen, Kid Chocolate, the man who likes to throw out a little bit of candy because he's sweet and smooth. Anyways, I'm going for the Peter Killen right here, Kid Chocolate. He's a young prospect coming up. Kid Dynamite got some power. He does got dynamite in those hands, but you know what? Peter Chocolate is going to make I it. I agree. Fun. I'm going with the new up-and-comer Peter Killen. I mean, that's just who's going to win this fight. I mean, 
Antoine Nichols is a good veteran and a good stepping stone to bigger and better things, but Peter Kalin is right now who, who we have to roll with. Uh, you've got to look at the last five outings of Antoine Nichols. He, he wasn't successful in those fights, so you just have to go well, with that. Just the way so now the next fight, David Lopez versus Michael Antonio Rubio. We got Rubio going into this fight. I'm going to go with the power puncher uh, Rubio. He is just sweet. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's, definitely, he's a definitely stellar guy. Now moving on to the next one, O'Neal Bell versus Tomas Angadems. Um, I'm gonna go with O'Neal Bell. He's definitely coming back into the cruise weight, and I think he's gonna go back and, and you know he started. He was a very good fighter. I think he's gonna dominate more. I agree. Um, moving on to the next fight, we got Adrian Diakono versus Chris Henry. I'm rolling with Diakono on this he's one. He's gonna go with the shark. I'm gonna go with the American kid who's a young coming up in prospect. You know, Henry Armstrong. But I but look for Diakono to be the victor in this one and move into the mix with Chad Dawson and everybody else at the light heavyweight division. Um, Pops by the four versus to be announced. I'm going with the ever dangerous to be announced. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going with Pops by the four. The uh, fat, he's going to come back. He's going to do his thing. And he, you know, at one he's going to box a hand. very boring 12 round decision. Thank Moving you. on. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Michelle Orlando. Chavez Jr., I'm going to go with the pedigree here. You need to step it up, though. Definitely. Uh, the next fight. The fight that everybody's been talking about and everybody wants to know and who is going to determine the number one pound for pound. Yes, you heard it. One Mayweather is not going to be the number one pound for pound after this fight on Saturday. Don't get it twisted. All y'all hearing it right. We're going to be the first ones to say it. And that's going to be the winner of Joe Calzaghe versus Bernard Hopkins. The winner of this fight will be the number one pound for pound, pound, pound. fighter in the world. And we're the first ones to say it. That's this is why. I think right now Joe Calzaghe is in a different level. I believe that he will be the victor in this fight. Not by a wide margin. I don't think that, that Calzaghe is going to decimate and destroy Bernard Hopkins. Because I think Bernard Hopkins is a veteran in the game. He's very crafty. He knows what to do. He's going to come in shape. He's, gonna, he's had this, you know, what you call the dream team in this corner right now. Since this corner man died, he's going to be out there. And, you know, I think that... Bernard Hopkins is going to come out here to make a statement that he is the greatest old man fighter ever in the game of boxing right now. But, in my opinion, honestly, he gets it done. I think that Joe Kazai is going to go in there. He's going to be real slick with his punches. He's going to be very elusive, and he's going to be able to counter Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins has never fought a guy like Joe Kazai, and Joe Kazai has never fought a guy like Bernard Hopkins. But in my mind, I just see Joe Kazai take it. This is what you got. You got in Bernard Hopkins, you got a crafty veteran who's fought great world champions in three different divisions, beat them, and now in charge of the light heavies. You've got and Joe Calzaghe, the greatest super middleweight probably of our ever and ever and ever, now going after his title. The difference between them, Joe Calzaghe's got angles, lots of punches in every round, and great footwork. Great footwork. Bernardo Hopkins got great footwork, iron chin, and, iron chin. and always comes very well prepared. In this fight, you have just a great, I mean, you're going to have a great show. You got it. It's just skills. It's all about the skills and the abilities. The God-given abilities these two guys have. I mean, it got you speechless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, this I, I, fight I, I, is up there right now. I'm telling you right you now, guys, this fight I mean, is going to be probably the most exciting fight. It's got one or two one ways of going out. It can either be the most boring fight because they're both going to be scared of each other playing chess all night. Right. Or they're going to go out there and wear their heart on their sleeve and make it a fight. And that's exactly what Joe Kazegi has said he is going to do. Bernard Hopkins said this is his last fight and this is his final ruha. If this is it, then this is the fight he's going to make. The, to, uh, the crowd-pleasing fight. Something that he did with Tito Trinidad years ago in 2001. He dominated that kid. Dominated Trinidad. So look for this fight to make news, make history. Uh, I'm rolling with Joe Calzaghe, but not by a whole lot. I'm rolling with Joe Calzaghe by a slim chance, but Bernard Hopkins is no slouch. Can't, I, and the only reason I'm saying Joe Calzaghe is because he, he throws a lot of punches, and he's younger out of the two, and he's naturally at that, at that weight class. He's a southpaw too, man. And I know that Bernard Hopkins fought 14 southpaws in his career. He knows how to fight southpaws, but he's just never fought a southpaw like Joe Calzaghe. And he had problems with Winky right in his last fight. So that's it, guys. I mean, that, that's, our, that's our show for today. Hopefully, you guys loved it. You guys entertained it. Uh, we're, like, entertained. we're entertaining oh, to you or somewhat entertaining. Hopefully, you got somewhat enlightened by viewing our show. Uh, if you like it, you see the button, subscribe, make it happen. Uh, our email, if you got any comments, concerns, or wishes.
P4Pmail at yahoo.com. And that's pretty much it. Look for the uh, mailbag that comes in. Look for the mailbag in the next one. A lot of you guys have been asking for it. We're going to give it to you in the next one. And this is Pound for Pound Box. Support it. We'll go back and we'll